What's up guys? So today we have an informational video for you today and it is going over our Reefs RC programmer. We get a lot of questions on how to use this, what options it has, what it allows you to do and what you can do with it. So today we're going to deep dive into the Reefs programmer and we're going to show you setting up the 179 Micro, a lot of the features it has and kind of go over a few of our options. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so what you're going to want to start by doing is head over to reefsrc.com. You're going to go to servo accessories and then servo programming. And then first thing comes up is our reefs USB link. You are going to click here on the link and then that will bring you a downloadable file, which you will click up in your downloads and you will download the file. We also have a previous video here if you'd like to check that one out as well, but we're making a new one. So let's look at the new one. So I'm gonna minimize this because I've already downloaded the file and you have your Reefs link here. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna head over here and we're gonna plug in our 179 smart and then you're going to go read. And what this is going to give you is read successful and it is going to let you know all of the parameters that you currently have. So our current servo angle is 220, servo neutral is zero, PWM power is 94.1, our dampening factor is 65 and our sensitivity is set to high. And then we have overload protection on and we have our overload level set. And this is where we're going to start getting into how to set up your servo for your specific needs. All right, guys, so here is our current parameters for our 179 micro. As you can see here, successful red parameters. I'm gonna go over and give you a brief description of what all of these mean. If you have any further questions or if you'd like to make some adjustments, just comment down below or send us an email and I'll help you out any way I can. So currently we're looking at servo angle is set to 220. This is how much the servo rotates. It's the angle of the servo. You could go in here and adjust your servo endpoints by adjusting this down. The reason I do not recommend that is because this is going to adjust them across the board. So if you're perfectly not centered left to right, then it's gonna reduce both of them. I like to set endpoints on the remote where I can make the right separate from the left if I need to have a couple clicks up and down. Also, if you take it out of that rig and put it in another rig, you could run into issues by thinking you don't have enough steering when it's just limited in the programmer. Servo neutral, this can work as you setting your zero point. So you can use trim or sub trim on your remote. You can also go ahead and do it in here and precisely set that sub trim. I mean, you can come through and just make slightest adjustments in here if you wanted to. PWM power is currently set at 94.1%. That is the output power of the servo. Most of our servos are set to 80%. Obviously, you can see this one's set to 94.1. And you can go in and adjust that any way you want. So if you want max power, full power, if you're going in there, if you want a little less power, let's say you're overpowering um, the rig, you can go ahead and adjust it down in there. Dampening factor. This is actually a pretty cool option that we offer. This is basically an electronic servo saver. So it's set to 60, which is pretty low. 50 is as low as we can go. But you can go all the way up to 600. And basically what this means is as it takes a big hit, it's going to allow that servo to come back and adjust for that hit without staying rigid. Obviously for us rock crawler guys, this is not something you're looking for. But if you have a big basher rig and you're landing and you don't need it to perfectly hold that line and you can have it bounce back and use the servo saver on the rig and the servo saver electronically, this could really save your truck. Sensitivity, this is just the sensitivity of the dead band. They all come at high. You could go to ultra high or you could go to low. Um, basically what this is going to adjust is as you turn your remote, how quickly that servo is going to react. So if you like, a very twitchy high servo and you want that high where we recommend it and you can leave it there. Let's say, you know, you tend to have a shake or you have a tremor, let's say, and you're constantly just kind of shaking. You can move that to low and then those little inputs won't see on your wheels. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to high. Um, <coughs> we have a couple options here. We have soft start. So this slowly powers up the servo. So let's say if you made the mistake and you hooked your servo level horn up 
to a new rig and you didn't set zero before. When you turn that on normally, if zero, let's say, is full lock, as soon as you get power, that servo is going to hit full lock. And that could damage something on your truck, could damage the servo, pushing it beyond its limits. What this will allow it to do, as soon as it gets up, it's slowly going to go, let's say it's over here, it's slowly going to go this way. And then that'll allow you some time to have that panic moment of, oh my God, I didn't set neutral on it. It's going full lock. You can unplug it. We have the Sanwa SSR, and that is to allow for Sanwa SSR mode, and the narrow band allows for your Futaba SR mode. So inversion is to set your servo from normal to reverse. You can do this on your remote as well. I just do it in there, but if you want to get fancy, you can do it in here. Lose PPM protect. So we have three options here. We have release, keep position, and go to neutral position. So basically, this is saying, if you lose signal from your radio, what do you want the servo to do? Releasing the servo, it's just going to allow it to go side to side. Keep a position is if you're full lock turning and you lose that signal, it's going to just keep that full lock. And then go to neutral position is going to go to the zero position and let you go out. So let's say you're running around with your basher rig, you fly off a jump, you get too far, it loses signal. If you go to go to neutral, it's just gonna land and continue to track straight. If you go to release, it's gonna allow the servo just to kind of hit bumps as it goes through. And if you go to keep position, so let's say you're going up and you're doing a whip in the air and you're full lock, as it hits, it's gonna hit that full lock and go through. I prefer neutral position, just kind of go into neutral position and then go through it. So one of our coolest options is overload protect. So this sets the servo blocking uh, protection and it gives you three options. So this is saying you're pushing your servo beyond its limits, you're all the way locked up and the servo is going to blow up, for an example. This is going to save you. You have one, two and three levels. Uh, this is seconds and this is how much power it's going to reduce it to before it pushes beyond that limit. I love these because if I get myself into a bind and I keep trying to go and go and go, I'd rather the servo say like, hey, I've had enough versus let out that magic smoke because once that magic smokes out or you blow up a gear, there's not really much coming back from that. So I'd highly recommend looking at these options and playing with these as you get more comfortable with your servos. Okay, so next up, we are going to discuss the programming of the servo from a servo to a servo winch. The best way to do that is head to our website as you click on programmer, you can scroll down and you see we have the 179, the 444, the 900, and the 1100 are our smart servo lines. So you can download each of these files here by just clicking here. It'll obviously throw it into your download and this will let you change your servo from a servo winch or a servo to a winch and from a winch to a servo back and forth. Let's say you had a triple four in your truck and you lost a winch in your comp truck and you're not looking to currently buy one of that quick second, but you need one for this weekend's comp. You can easily go in here, change to winch, run it through. Let's say you're bailed in an awesome show rig and you wanna have both servos up front match. You can run a 900 smart for steering and a 900 smart for servo winch. Awesome options we have. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and play with the 179 micro today. As you can see right here, I've previously downloaded my files and set it in here. So what you're gonna to wanna to go is UPF, and then you're gonna find what you wanna do. So this is obviously my servo here, and I'm gonna make it a winch. And I'm gonna go open, and as you can see, it's downloading the winch software, and everything is completely different. So when it dropped over to the winch configuration, I have my power is now set at 86.3, and the winch is three seconds is your pro PTL. Now this is the starting point for the servo and the protection failure. So as it's pulling out, it'll let you pull for three seconds with no movement before it releases and says, hey guys, I can't pull up whatever you're looking to pull up. So if you're pulling up your real car, it's gonna pull for three seconds and say, I can't do that. So 100% written in, you're good to go. Say you wanna make it max. I mean, there's no reason to adjust inversion, but you can, it's all in here. And you're good to go. Write those parameters in, boom, everything's done, it saves. You can go through read and you can see it saves on in. Now let's say you're done with that comp, you got your new servo, you got it went through and you're like, hey, I really need this to be a servo again. 
Now you just click on UPF. You're going to go back to regular. You're going to go to open. It's downloading the software right now and successful update servos plugged in. We're back to 220. We're back to zero. We're back to 94.1. We're back to dampening angle. Everything is preset for you guys. It's literally that easy to go from servo to servo winch. Super easy process. If you have any questions, please comment down below. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.